Welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Tuesday, July 27th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories read here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. And here are the news stories for the day from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. The uh, Chairman of the Senate Indian Affairs Committee, Byron Dorgan, introduced a bill recently to seek a comprehensive approach to resolving problems imposed on the seven tribes whose lands were flooded by the Pick Sloan program dams. The Pick Sloan Tribal Communities Bill establishes a commission that would hold hearings and study the outstanding issues in order to make a final recommendation to Congress and the administration for a comprehensive resolution of the tribal claims. The 1944 Flood Control Act authorized the Pick Sloan program to stop flooding along the Missouri River as well as other proposals such as navigation and hydroelectric power. As a part of this plan, five dams were constructed on the Missouri River which flooded Indian reservation lands, community infrastructure, and prime agricultural and hunting areas. Although the tribes received some compensation for the lands, each tribe was comp uh, compensated for differently and some promises remained unfilled, unfulfilled. Dorgan said it's time we develop a solution to finally settle these dec decades old issues. <clears throat> the FBI doubled its reward for help in finding whoever tried to derail an Amtrak passenger train traveling through the Cataraugus reservation earlier this month. With the 20,000 now set aside for information that leads to a conviction, federal authorities said an aggressive multi-agency investigation would continue into railroad ties positioned across the CSX tracks on the Seneca Nation Reservation early on July 5th. No one was injured when a train carrying 354 people hit the barricade at 70 miles an hour, but the train's undercarriage was damaged. The train stopped briefly before continuing on. Seneca leaders have condemned the vandalism. The Mille Lacs Band of Ojibwe donated over $50,000 in monetary and in-kind contributions to a variety of nonprofit organizations and other charitable causes during May. Every month, the band contributes to community programs in Minnesota and nationwide. So far in the year 2010, the band has donated over $340,000. In June, the Mille Lacs Band donated $5,000 to the Minneapolis Institute of Arts Art of the Native Americans, the Thaw Collection exhibit. The ex exhibition, which will run from October 24th to January 9th, 2011, will feature art produced by Native American cultures, many of which demonstrate an appreciation of the power of the natural world. Navajo voters will have an additional box to check at the polls on Election Day. Tribal lawmakers have approved a bill that would ask voters whether they want to change judges from being appointed to being elected. If passed on November 2nd, three tribal Supreme Court justices and 17 district court judges would be elected starting in the year 2012. Supporters of the effort to elect judges say it ensures they, they are accountable to the people. Critics, including the tribe's judiciary branch, says it damages the ability of judges to be impartial in court and ensures that only those with sufficient financial resources would seek office. Some tribal lawmakers also raised concerns that the measure was introduced in retaliation for a string of tribal Supreme Court decisions that sided against the business council of the Navajo Nation. An appellate court in Washington, D.C. has ruled in favor of northern New Mexico's Haricarilla Apache Nation in a dispute over natural gas royalties dating from more than 20 years ago. The decision could mean millions of dollars for the tribe. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia ruled last week the U.S. Department of Interior improperly relied on regulations that went into effect after the 1984-1988 period in question. The judges reversed part of a federal court summary judgment in favor of the department. They returned the case to that court with instructions to send it back to the agency to fix how it calculated natural gas royalties. An Ohio man who claimed that his American Indian ancestry makes him exempt from city nuisance laws has been ordered to clean up two homes that have fallen into disrepair. A judge told William Bauer Sock that he has 30 days to take care of the properties in Lima, Ohio. 
Ohio. The judge rejected Bowersock's argument that he has seceded from the local government and formed his own Indian reservation, therefore making him exempt from the city's property code. Percy Abrams stood outside a lacrosse field across downtown and ocean away from his sports world championships there in Buffalo, New York. Abrams is executive director of the Iroquois Nationals and he was left to dwell on what was won and what was lost by refusing to travel to England on non-native passports. The Iroquois team made international headlines last week bringing it to the forefront long-standing concerns North American tribes have over sovereignty and their rights. They did so by refusing to board a plane to England with anything but their Iroquois Confederacy issued passports which lack the technology and requirements in a post-September 11, 2001 world. His team was ranked fourth in the world and had a chance to challenge the United States and Canada, perennial powers who play for the title uh, last Saturday in Manchester, New England, uh, Manchester, England. It's like an open wound right now because the games aren't, uh, aren't completely over, Abrams said. We, not, we know that those teams didn't have to come through us in order to get that cup. Abrams smiled when informed that the Empire State Games Central New York lacrosse team, playing on the field before him, was honoring the Nationals' decision by placing the Six Nations emblem on the back of their helmets. Though the U.S. State Department, at the behest of Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, intervened to allow the team a one-time travel waiver, the British government refused their entry. All might not be lost for the Iroquois this year, Jamieson said, that as a result of the publicity the team had been invited to play in several tournaments. One is in Bermuda, where organizers say passports should not be an issue. Also on the table is a proposal for what would amount to a quasi-North American championship at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York this fall. The tournament would feature the Iroquois, the U.S., Canada, and potentially three of the country's top college teams. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you all for joining with us. Come back again soon. Miigwech.